Hey guys, welcome to lesson number 15 called Finding Limits. This is your last Ed Puzzle of the year. You did it. Let's go ahead and just jump right into what your Delta Math will be covering. So you only have two sections this go around. Your first one is limits of piecewise functions, and the second one is finding limits graphically, but only one-sided limits. We're first talking about limits of piecewise functions. So we've talked about piecewise functions in terms of their own functions and in terms of continuity. Now we are connecting the idea of continuity to limits. So this is an example of a problem you got under the continuity section last week. You had those on Tuesday's assignment and Thursday's assignment. So you were given a piecewise function and you had to decide whether it was continuous or not. If it was continuous, then that meant that on both sides, the y was approaching or the output was approaching the same value. And if it was discontinuous, then it was approaching different values, meaning those graphs didn't meet up at the same y point. They had different y values that they were approaching. This time, you are looking at the same format of piecewise functions, but you are not, you are not looking at it in terms of continuity. We're calling it limits now. So before we go over some examples, this is an example of a limit notation. As x approaches a for this particular function, what is the y getting closer to, right? So this is an overall limit, right? You could call this a two-sided limit. So that implies that there are also one-sided limits. So this is the same format, right? The same notation. The only new thing is that there's a little negative sign to the top right of a. That just tells you that I'm looking for the limit from the left-hand side, not from the right. And then same thing with your right-hand side. So your limit from the right is when there's a little positive next to your number on the right side, not on the left side. So don't confuse that with integers, negative and positive integers. These are negative and positive directions. So now, this is what your first section of Delta Math's questions are going to look like. Starting with the one-sided piecewise function. So you're given a limit, and the reason why it's called a one-sided problem is because it's giving you a certain side to evaluate at. So here, the minus means negative, so you're only looking at the limit from the left-hand side. So as you approach 3 from the left-hand side, you are looking at all values less than 3. So this is the function that you are evaluating. Alright, so let's go ahead and plug in 3 and see what we would get. So if you plug in 3 for x, then you just get 3 plus 3 which is six. So in this problem, that is your answer. That is it. So you're determining the direction, you're evaluating the function, and then you're gonna get your answer. Now let's try the same type of question, but with a two-sided limit. For a two-sided function, you aren't given a direction, right? You see how there's nothing here, no direction that you're evaluated at. So what you're doing is you're evaluating from both sides, and you're determining what value it approaches from both sides. So you're going to plug 4 into both of these functions. So let's go ahead and do that. So you get negative 10 plus 4 squared, and you're going to plug it on the right-hand side function 2, 4 plus 2. So don't forget PEMDAS. PEMDAS. So you are going to negative, two plus, negative 10 plus 16, which is 6. And from the other side, you get 6 as well. So that means that from both directions, your y value would be 6. Now, Ms. Abdi, what if they approach different numbers, right? What if this was 10 and this was 12? Then you would select the D and E button on Delta Math, which stands for does not exist. So if they're approaching different numbers, then that limit does not exist because it doesn't approach the same value like this one does at the same side. So you would hit this button right here. Now let's do this one whole group. So first, you want to determine what direction am I asking for. Then you are going to relate the direction into deciding which domain to use. Right? Am I going to use my right domain or my left-hand domain? Then you are going to plug in the, the A value that you get into your input for the correct direction. Now let's find some limits graphically. 
So the same rule applies, right? If it's from the left-hand side, it's a little negative. If it's from the right-hand side, it's a positive. If there is no side a sign at all in the top right corner, that is a both sides. It's asking you to evaluate on both sides and determine what the limit is. So on this problem, it's asking us as x approaches 3, negative, so as x approaches 3 from the left-hand side. So we've got this function. As we approach this function from the left-hand side and we get closer and closer to positive 3, we see that our answer would be 1. And it asks you on delta math, you would just put 1. All right, now let's try another example. So here we have the limit x is negative 4 from the left-hand side. So notice how there's a negative on the left and a negative on the right, and those mean two different things. So this is as x approaches negative 4 from the left-hand side, your answer, your limit is going to be positive 1, right? If you would come from the other direction, your answer would have been different, but that's why it's specified, right? that your answer is from the left-hand side. So this one is also one. So we have another function, we're given a limit, we're given a direction, we see that this one is from the right-hand side. So as we approach x equals four, from the right-hand side, you see that your y value, oh, these are all one, that's crazy. Yeah, so this one is approaching positive one, right? It doesn't necessarily equal it, but you see that from the right-hand side, it's one. Now, why is it not negative 6, right? What would it have to be for it to be negative 6? For the answer to be negative 6, it would ask the same question, but it would be x is approaching 4 from the left-hand side. So the answer to this guy, surprise, surprise, is also 1. All right, let's do one last example. So here... You are given this function, still a graph, right before you begin to evaluate the limit, pause, time out, compare this to one of the limit questions. So if it was asking for a limit, right, this is what the notation would be. But here, it's just asking you to evaluate this value. So you're doing the exact graphical evaluation that we've been doing for forever. So at negative two, at x equals negative two, what is my y? Right? And now you see that there's two possible answers, but you have to pick one because this is a function. So your answer is just negative one because this point includes that value. So be very careful, right? Delta math will try to trick you and keep you on your toes, but you were trying to find the included value. So this answer, wow, it's not one, but it's negative one. Alrighty, I hope that helps. You're done. You're done with Delta Math videos. You still have one other extra project left, but I'm so proud of you. Um, just want to share with you that making these videos, um, I don't know how it comes off as to you, but it's pretty hard. Um, it like causes a lot of anxiety, especially at the beginning, but even throughout. Um, it's safe to say that I've learned a lot. I'm really proud of y'all, and I hope that you feel like you've learned at least a little bit from this last quarter. Um, keep up the good work and I'll see you next time.